What's up, guys? Welcome, welcome. My name is Amanda Nybert, registered dietitian. Excited to be here. Going to give everybody just a second to jump on. Um, talking all about reverse dieting. I'm live on Instagram, live on TikTok, and live on Facebook. So, kind of directing my focus um, to my Instagram camera. But I'm really excited to talk about this topic because I think it's extremely important. Um, it's an extremely important process that you must get, that you must do in order to see long-term success. Um, if you are on the diet roller coaster, if you are a yo-yo dieter, if you are constantly gaining and losing, I promise you this is the step that you're missing. I also really want to emphasize today why extremely super caloric restricted programs methods are going to backfire in the long run. You know, um, starvation has always been the best, the easiest way for women to, you know, lose weight. I mean, that's what we did when we were young. We just cut calories, we didn't eat, and we dropped weight. And ultimately, that was the begin of our demise. The, the begin of the downfall of our metabolism and that's what it all comes down to um, and as we age our metabolism reduces the more we diet our metabolism reduces and reverse dieting is all about building back your metabolism to a healthy range so that weight sustainability is more effortless um, so I'm really I'm gonna try to go really quickly I'm gonna try to hit all the key features I'm gonna talk about what reverse dieting is why it's important, when you should do it, and how you should do it, okay? I'm gonna try to make this about 30 minutes and then I'm gonna answer all of your questions. Um, so let's talk about, I, I wanna give you a little bit of background. Um, I've been doing lean for you know over five years, living energized and nourished, it's my signature program. And I often hear from clients who said, Amanda, I did lean two, three, four years ago and I saw great success. I lost 20 pounds. I kept it off for a little bit and then this happened and I gained it back. I fell off track and I gained it back. And then I'm back in lean. I'm doing the same exact thing, but I'm not seeing the same results. And this really highlights the importance of reverse dieting. And, and, and this is how it works, okay? Anytime you put yourself into a caloric deficit, the first time you put yourself in a caloric deficit, your metabolic rate is most likely at its highest, okay? Research shows that people that yo-yo diet restrict gain, restrict gain, restrict binge, restrict binge, end up in the long run carrying more body fat than people that just simply overeat, over consume calories in the long run. And that's very telling that uh, of how impactful um, this restricting and, and gaining, this restricting and binging is to our metabolism. It's much more harmful. Um, and that's why it's important for you guys to stop looking for quick fixes, period, okay? There is no quick fix, all right? This is a long-term game when it comes to your health and wellness. And the more that you tap into these quick fix plans, yeah, you're gonna lose a bunch of weight and then you're gonna gain it back. You're harming your metabolism over and over. So for example, the first time you started lean, your metabolic rate might have been 2,000 calories, 2,200 calories. And this is why it's really important for me to start my clients at the highest caloric deficit possible. I mean, yes, I my clients could lose twice as much, much if I put them all on 1,200 calories. But the, the way to maintain the healthiest metabolism is to cut your, your calories as small as possible while seeing, seeing results. And that's why a lot of people are always shocked when they start the lean program. They're like, oh my gosh, I get 1,800 calories? It says I need 2,000 calories? That is your caloric deficit. Most people, when they start a program, are eating well over that. So in the beginning, let's say your metabolic rate was about 2,000 calories and we put you in a deficit at say like 1700, you're gonna see great results, all right? You've got that deficit, you're hit, optimizing your protein, you're hitting those numbers, your body's responding, okay? As you lose weight, your metabolism adapts, your body adapts. When you are not providing it with the normal amount of energy, it's gonna lower, all right? So it's used to burning 2000 calories a day, when you start consuming only 1,700 calories a day, it's slowly gonna adapt to that. And that's why people hit plateaus, 
okay? The other benefit of starting your calories at the highest possible um, is because we can address plateaus. You know, if you hit 1,700 calories and you finally hit a plateau, maybe that's three months, maybe that's six months, whatever, we have somewhere to go, okay? So then we take you to 1,500 calories. And all of a sudden, again, now the, the deficit is bigger. Your metabolic rate has adapted to 1,700, but now we're taking in 1,500. And so now we're back to burning, you know, fat again. But eventually it will adapt, okay? And there becomes a point in our journey where you can't go any lower, all right? It's not helpful. Uh, you know, again, as your metabolism slows down, everything slows down. Your thyroid function slows down, your digestion slows down, your, you know, again, your respiration slows down. It, all of those things are natural things, things that our body has been designed to do to survive and thrive in times of famine, which was a huge issue. Not an issue now, um, but these are normal adaptions that the body makes in order to, again, survive. We just kind of have to, you know, outsmart it, okay? So again, you get to a point in your, you know, journey where you, again, your metabolic rate equals your intake and there's no point in going lower, okay? I, I hate to put people below 1,400 calories, you know? I mean, maybe if you're 5'2", you know, super short, uh, petite, um, you can tolerate those lower calories. But I think anything below 1,400 calories is just, again, setting you up to fail. It's not sustainable. It's not good for your hormones, all of those things. So at that point, you have two options, okay? You can either grind out your, you know, caloric deficit, which is what I see people do all the time. Um, you can give up, you know, now you're frustrated, you're barely eating, you're not seeing results. You slowly start to eat again, and then you slowly start to gain it back. Um, you know, those are kind of like the two options that we see, you know, a lot of people struggle with that long-term success because they don't reverse diet. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, so what is reverse dieting? It is basically building back up your metabolic rate to something that's sustainable. Um, this concept is, is uh, you know, seen a lot, like they, it's been studied a lot in like the Biggest Loser contestants. You know, they go to the farm, um, you know, the ranch, and they put them on extremely low calorie diets. They exercise for six hours a day. They're in a huge caloric deficit and they're burning massive amounts of calories and they're shedding massive amounts of weight. Well, when they get home, you know, at the end, they basically have shrunk their metabolic rate to nothing. And typically what happens when they interview these contestants is, you know, the assumption is, is they go back to, you know, eating like an asshole all the time. And that's why they gain back a hundred pounds, 200 pounds. But in reality, their metabolic rate is say 1200 calories and they eat 13 and they start gaining. And how frustrating is that when you're still really working hard, maybe you're just a little over, but you start gaining. And then eventually it's like too much. You know, you're doing so much. You're, you're trying to stay in that caloric deficit. Maybe you're eating just a little bit more. It's causing weight gain and then you give up. All right. So it's again, it's like the reverse dieting is really the, the step that they missed in terms of long-term success. So basically it is building your calories back up. For example, you know, I typically like to build my clients calories back by about 400 calories. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, you know, the reasons why you'll take a diet break, which I will elaborate more, you've hit a plateau, you've hit your goal weight, or you need a break, okay? And I'm going to elaborate on those. But those are the three scenarios in which you should actively reverse diet. So say you are at 1,400 calories. Reverse dieting is where you slowly add back 100 calories. Sometimes, you know, um, it takes three to four months to add 400 calories. Sometimes it takes six to eight months. It depends on how sound your metabolism is. Sometimes you add back and you actually have to gain some to build up your metabolism, which in the long run is not a bad thing, okay? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, but that's basically what reverse dieting is, is taking your current metabolic rate. So again, if you've hit a plateau, you've hit your goal weight, or you need a break, you're basically at a place where grinding out your caloric deficit is not a good idea. So we wanna build back up the calories, okay? You cannot live in a caloric deficit. I cannot say that enough, 
okay? And I see it over and over, especially when people hit their goal weight, you know? And, and again, usually the feedback is, um, is that, you know, oh, I, I feel good. Like I lost all my weight on 1600 calories. This is not hard for me to sustain. I don't have any issues. Like I'm just gonna stick at 1600 calories. And yeah, that typically is okay in the beginning, but then the holidays come around. And again, you eat 1700 calories and because your metabolic rate is at 16, you start to gain, okay? And here's the deal. Then let's say you gain four or five pounds over the holidays because you, know, you ate 1800 calories a day. It does not take much when your metabolism is so slow, so low. Then you go back to trying to lose weight and guess what? It doesn't work like that. Now 1600 calories because that's your metabolic rate is not enough for weight loss. So even though you lost weight at 1600 calories in the beginning, when you gain weight and you don't improve your metabolism, now you have to go to 1400 calories. You see what I'm saying? Whereas if you take the time, once you hit your goal weight, to actually build back up your metabolism, it's easy. I mean, why wouldn't you wanna eat more? Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but you've worked so hard to lose the weight, why would you not take the next three to four months to just slowly build up your metabolism, add that extra 400 calories. It's called that buffer room, okay? Um, and the more metabolically adaptive you are, the more likely you are to sustain your weight. So that's, again, the, the bottom line of what reverse dieting is. It is building back up your metabolism. Why is it important? Again, because you cannot grind out a, um, a caloric deficit. It's not good for your hormones. It's not sustainable. You know, you cannot live in a caloric deficit. You have to take diet breaks at some period in, in your journey. It's important, again, to build back up a healthier metabolism so that you don't gain weight over time. So again, it's, it's really about creating metabolic health. So when should you implement reverse dieting? I kind of talked about this, but let me elaborate. Um, number one, you hit a plateau. I define a plateau as no weight loss, no inches lost, no change in body composition for four consecutive weeks of being on track, okay? Now, if two weeks out of the four weeks you were on vacation, that's probably not a plateau. I doubt you were 80% while you're on vacation. You know, if there's a missing link, if, if for four weeks you didn't hit your protein goal, it's probably not a caloric issue, it's a protein issue. You know, for four weeks you slept really bad, Again, probably not a caloric issue, it's a sleep issue. So my clients are always encouraged to email me um, and I have a plateau form that they fill out and we look at everything, okay? Because the first thing we wanna change when you hit a plateau is your macros. And sometimes that's not the first thing we need to change. You know, sometimes it's we need to eat more, we need to add more protein, we need to focus on our sleep, other things. So again, you really have to, you know, are you in a true plateau, number one. So. That is a, a scenario in which you would want a reverse diet, um, especially if your calories are already super low. Now, if you hit a plateau and you're eating 2,000 calories a day, you know, and everything else checks out, we take you to 18. All right. Again, that's the benefit of not starting your calories too low, because if you start at 1,200, you have nowhere to go but to reverse diet. Um, so a plateau is an area, again, when your calories are, you know, 1,400 or less, or maybe you're like, I can't eat less than 1600 calories. If you asked me to eat less than 1600 calories, I would die. There's no way I could do that. So if I had a plateau at a caloric deficit of 1600, it's not, it, it does not feel healthy or sustainable for me to go to 1400. So I would want to reverse diet. You know, I'd want to add 400 calories, get my metabolism back up to 2000, then go back in a deficit. Um, so a plateau. Number two, you hit your goal weight. Oh. It's, I mean, I see this over and over, is that you know people put so much effort into the weight loss, but they don't take the same amount of effort to put in the maintenance. And reverse dieting needs to be the first thing on your list when you hit your goal weight. And I'm gonna tell you why you don't. Because women, we always wanna be skinnier. We always wanna be lighter, all right? So maybe our goal weight was 150 and we hit it. And we say, man, what if I could be 145? I promise you, that's exactly what you do. Um, we're always reaching for the next level. It's like never good enough. Don't make that mistake. When you get to a point where you feel healthy, where you feel vibrant, where you have a ton of energy, because people are always like, 
What's my goal weight? Well, that's relative, okay? It's a feeling. It's where you feel confident in your clothes. It's where your health is elevated. It's where you sleep well, you have energy. That's your goal weight. When you get there, by golly, focus on reverse dieting, all right? Because here's the deal. Even if you want to go more, okay? Um, and that's the same thing with like plateaus. A lot of times people are like, well, I don't want to reverse diet because I'm not where I want to be. And I'm like, well, yeah, I understand that. But sometimes we have to take breaks along the path. You know, again, weight loss is not a ski slope. You know, sometimes we got to, you know, take a break and then we, you know, power up again. Um, so even if you're in a plateau, even if you're not where you want to be, reverse dieting is key. So again, if you're at your goal weight and you have not focused on implementing reverse dieting, please start doing so. Even if you feel like I could eat 1500 calories for the rest of my life, you can't. Christmas, Cinco de Mayo your birthday, whatever it may be, okay? There will be periods in your life where you will overconsume calories. And it's gonna be a lot easier for you to maintain your weight loss if your caloric, if your metabolism is 1,900 calories than if it's 1,500 calories. And the last one is you need a break. This is a big one, guys. Um, I've talked a, a little bit about seasons in terms of, um, you know, um, weight loss, okay? In the beginning of the year in January, in my Lean Monthly Membership, um, I have all my clients sit down and I say, I want you to pick out three months twice that you are going to take a diet break. Two months twice that you're going to take a diet break, okay? Because you cannot grind out a caloric deficit. Again, I'm going to say it over and over, all right? It's not healthy. It's not good for your metabolism. You have to take diet breaks. And there are periods in the year that it is easier to be in a caloric deficit than, you know, it is to not be. For example, summer, okay? Welcome to the first weekend of summer. I mean, isn't Memorial Day officially the start of summer? Um, so for a lot of people, summertime is so hard to stay in a caloric deficit. And if you understand that the next three months are not a good time for you to focus on weight loss, that it is a better time for you to focus on maintenance, then you will be much more successful. Because what I see is people will try to grind out a caloric deficit in the summertime and they'll fail. And then like they beat themselves up. Look, I suck. I can't do it. I'm not successful. I have no willpower. I have no motivation. It's all me. No, it's summer. Okay. It's summer. So, you know, again, it's like, give yourself grace, you know, January, February, March, April, those are great months to grind it out. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody's on a diet. And then summertime may be a good time for you to take a break. Now, summertime may be the time that you can invest in yourself. For example, you know, teachers, people that have time off in the summertime, sometimes for them, that's a good, you know, January, February, March is not a good time. You know, they're focused on teaching our kids and lesson plans and working, you know, 12 hours a day. And summertime gives them a little break. They have time to meal prep. They have time to plan. So everybody's season is different. But... If you're at a point in your season where you know it's time to take a break, holidays, that's another time. So generally, um, you know, I think a lot of people will take a break in the summer or should take a break in the summer. And again, a diet break doesn't mean gaining it all back. A diet break means maintaining, like your life depends on it. And I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna tell you how. Um, and then dialing it back in in August when kids go back to school, we've got more structure, schedule, um, and, you know, dialing it in August, September, October, and then again, taking another break, November and December. Those are months that are hard to grind out a caloric deficit. So those are the three scenarios in which I think you should consider reverse dieting. You've hit a plateau, you've hit your goal weight, you need a break. All right. So <clears throat> how do you do it? Okay. How do you reverse diet? It's very simple in concept, but can be, you know, again, it takes a lot of effort to implement. So what I recommend to start out, I will say with reverse dieting, um, it does require um, reliance on the scale a little bit more than I like, okay? And so if you're someone who like lives and dies by the scale, you know, you might wanna focus more on how you feel, how your clothes are fitting, um, but the best way to make sure that you are maintaining while increasing your metabolic rate is to weigh, you know, two to three times a week. So if you're thinking about reverse dieting, I encourage you to weigh 
three times a week for the next two weeks, okay? And then I want you to take that average. Guys, it is very normal for the scale to fluctuate, okay? Five pounds, very normal for the scale to go up and down five pounds. So over the next two weeks, those six weights, you take your six weights, you divide it by, you add them up, you divide it by six, that's your green light number. That's your average, okay? It's not your low, it's not your high, it's your average. So that's what I call your green light number. Then we wanna define what's your red light number. So your red light number is three above that. All right, so if you weigh, if your average is 150, then your red light number is 153, all right? Let's say your deficit was 1,400 calories, all right? You're gonna start reverse dieting by adding 1,500. You're gonna add 100 calories. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna increase your caloric intake by 100 calories for the next two to four weeks, okay? And you're gonna continue to weigh three times a week. And as long as you stay within your range, 150, to 153, you're good, okay? We don't make any changes. Now, if you hit your red light number, let's say you add 100 calories and you know five days later, you hit 153. All right, we're gonna take a big deep breath, okay? We're gonna give it 24 hours and we're gonna weigh again, okay? Because most of the time, you'll be back down to 151. Um, but if in the second day, you are 153 again, then at that point, we will take out that 100 calories, okay? So we'll pull it out, We'll go back into our little deficit. Most likely the scale will correct itself. You'll get closer to your green light number. And once we get back to 150, 151, and we stabilize there, then we'll add that 100 calories back, okay? Now, typically, when you add back that first 100 calories, 200 calories, some people lose weight, okay? I'm working with a gal right now, one-on-one, -on -one, and you know she, we went through all her stuff and I said, well, the only way I'm gonna work with you is if you reverse diet. And she's like, okay. So basically we bumped her up to 1500 calories and she's lost three pounds in the last like week, you know? Um, again, she was just under eating, you know, under eating, over exercising, her body was in that stress mode. So typically when people add back that first 100 to 200 calories, there's very little effect, okay? Most of the time you maintain, I would say 50% of people see a little weight loss, which is a good thing. So as long as you stay within that, you know, red light, green light range for about two to three weeks, you add another hundred calories and you play that same dance. And then, you know, two to three weeks later, if you're maintaining, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. You know, sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm kind of hovering over at 152. I should probably stay at this caloric value and, and let my body adapt a little bit more before I add another one. So sometimes you have to stay at that caloric level for four weeks, you know, before you add it back. But, but that's the goal, okay? Is that we slowly add back, ideally 400 calories, and we stay within our red light, green light number, okay? Now, there's another way to implement reverse dieting um, without tracking, or there's another way to just take a break, okay? So let's say summertime is coming up and you're like, I just need a break. Okay, I need a break from tracking. I need a break, you know, from, you know, eating healthy. I mean, whatever, okay? You can never completely just stop your health and wellness journey. I, I wanna be clear about that, okay? It is something that you have to actively work at every single day. And it may be something that you work at 10% of your day, some days, and it may be some days that you work 80% but you can never just put your health and wellness on the back burner. So, and that's what people do is they just say, I need a break. I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm going to come back. You know, I see that a lot in December. People are like, you know what? I'm just going to eat like an asshole all month and I'm just going to start in January. Don't do that. Okay. So another way, if you're feeling like, okay, summer is a hard time. Like I just need to take a break is basically you develop that red light, green light number. Okay. Um, and you just, you know, you stop tracking, you, you know, eat whatever in relatively, you know, again, it's more of like, you're not tracking, but I would encourage you to still have priorities, optimize protein, make sure that's a priority, get your water, you know, movement, but you're not like in the nitty gritty of the macro tracking. Um, and as soon as you see your red light number, you go back to tracking for a week. Okay, it is so much easier for you to diet or go in a deficit for maybe one week, five days a month, 
to get yourself back to your red, green light number than it is, again, to grind out a caloric deficit all summer long. Does that make sense? This is a concept that I used to teach my patients in the hospital setting. I worked with patients that lost 100, 200, 300 pounds. And I would always tell them at like their one year appointment, I'd be like, okay, listen, this is your goal. What's your red light number? Don't ever let yourself gain beyond that red light number, okay? Because that's what we do. It's like, oh, it's just five pounds. And then it's like, oh, it's just 10 pounds. I'm still down 50. You know, don't let that happen. The minute you see yourself at that red light number, do something about it. Because typically it's inflammation, it's, you know, a little overindulgence. And if you can just dial it in for the next four, five, six, seven days, you'll get back to your safe zone. So that's another way that you could, again, kind of reverse diet, because obviously when you're not tracking, you're probably gonna be eating more, um, and, and slowly build up your metabolism without gaining it all back. Um, so what questions do you guys have about reverse dieting? I always like to remind my Lean Monthly Membership, the reverse dieting guide is in the portal download it, utilize it. There's a nice chart in there that you can track everything um, to make it super simple. So you guys have access to that. If you're not in Lean Monthly Membership, you can purchase it on my website. But um, I really believe that this concept of reverse dieting is absolutely your missing link. Your missing link. Okay, so let me, um, I'm going to scroll through my Instagram questions and see what you guys have. I did good. I only I, it was only about 25 minutes. What's up from California? Hey guys, it's true, outstanding. Um, I really appreciate this. What, what about your energy levels? I play a fair bit of golf. Will I experience a lack of energy or will I adapt, adapt in the long run? Um, I guess the question is, are you experiencing energy fatigue in your caloric deficit? I would, ex I would assume that you know that's when you're feeling more fatigued. Um, versus the reverse dieting should give you more energy. Um, if you are in such a deficit that you can't function, that's a red flag. It's too low. So your energy, usually if you optimize protein, get adequate calories, your energy level should be really high. Obviously you're sleeping, reducing alcohol. There's a lot of things that can play into energy, maybe reducing high inflammatory foods, um, gluten, dairy, sugar, alcohol. Um, you know, but uh, your caloric deficit should not make you feel miserable. That's why when a program tells you not to exercise, run, <laughs> run, okay? There's a reason why, because they're putting you into such a caloric deficit that they know that if you add exercise to that, you are gonna ramp up your cortisol even more. And it's, it's not healthy. Um, I definitely need to learn more about metabolic rate. When you say build back your metabolism, is that resistance training to build muscle? That's actually one way, okay? So there's a couple of ways that you can build your metabolism. The most effective way is to build muscle mass. So if you're not strength training, you should be, okay? Especially, again, women as we age, men and women, we, we have a condition called sarcopenia as we age. The reason why we have sarcopenia, which is the loss of muscle mass, is the inadequate consumption of protein, You'll hear me say it 150 times. I do not advocate a high protein diet, but I do advocate a protein adequate diet. And 90% of you are not consuming enough protein. Please do not take nutritional advice from Kim Kardashian. That's for sure. Um, and um, the loss of muscle. The reason why you lose muscle is you're not eating enough protein and you're not strength training. So yes, building muscle is a great way to build up your metabolism. Someone asked me today, she's like, I heard you couldn't build muscle after 40. Well, that's bullshit, okay? You can build muscle at 70, 80, 90, 100, okay? Um, there is no limit to, there is no age in terms of when you can build muscle. So um, I love that question. Um, same, we cannot interact with Amanda. Hello, she said she would answer questions at the end. Yes, I did. Have you seen clients lose their period after some fat loss? Does that mean BMI is too low or does it come back after body recalibrates to the new fat percentage? Um, yeah, no, definitely. If you lose your period, it is a sign that your body fat is too low. You might be fasting too long if you've in, in, implemented intermittent fasting. Um, I wouldn't extend a fat, you know, I wouldn't do extended fast. I would limit fasting to about 14 hours. Um, you might not be eating enough caloric intake. You might not have enough fat reserves. 
that's a pretty big red flag. Now, if you're 50 and you lose your period, it could be you're just going through menopause. Um, so it's normal for your periods to obviously um, decline as we age. But um, typically if you're of like a menstruating age and you're losing your period, it's a red flag. Um, what does reverse dieting even mean? I think I talked about that. Um, to work to increase building back your me metabolic rate, that's right. Would you recommend reverse dieting if you've been at 1200 calories for two plus years after completing two rounds of lean? Yes. A, I don't know how you live on 1200 calories, but absolutely, if you are grinding out 1200, 1400, 1600 calories, it is time to reverse diet. Most people need to be sitting at 18, 2000, 2200 for maintenance, okay? For me, my, you know, typically my maintenance is right around 2000 to 2200. Um, and I'm pretty metabolically flexible, you know? It doesn't take me a long time to reverse diet um, because I don't grind out caloric deficits. I don't undereat, you know? Um, I don't stay, you know, I don't do a big cut for long periods of time. Um, and I'm consistent. And that's the thing, guys. You guys want fast results, but what you need to focus on is consistency for results that last. That's ultimately what it comes down to. So absolutely, Karen, start reverse dieting. Any fasting or carb cycling during the reverse dieting? That's actually a great um, question. I mean, for me, um, I recommend 12 to 16 hour fast every day because why not? It's very effortless. You know, um, do you, I think everyone should fast for 12 hours. That is my stance, you know, on that matter. Um, from your one-year-old to your 110-year-old, it should not, it should be effortless to fast for 12 hours. Um, so at least a 12-hour fast, um, but if you want to do 14, 16, go for it. I know for me, my fasting varies from day to day. I probably average more of about a 14-hour fast most days, but some days I get 16, some days I only get 12. Um, carb cycling, again, not as important in reverse dieting. It's really about bringing your calories back. I, you know, ultimately, I don't think carb cycling is really important for long-term success. You know, I think definitely dialing in on a couple of low-carb days can be beneficial because we know that when we restrict carbs, we burn more fat. Um, and what I love about carb cycling is it teaches you balance. You know, the, the last thing you need to do is fear carbs, all right? Because if you could live on a low-carb diet, you would be skinny mini and you would not be, you know, looking to lose weight all the time. Low-carb diets are unsustainable. Okay, there, you've got to understand that there is a balance. You can have 150 carbs and still have good blood sugar regulation, you know, good weight loss, you know, good progress in the gym. Um, so that's really the big thing I love about carb cycling is really teaching people to not fear carbohydrates. Love the red light, green light number to get myself back on track. I don't fully understand the reverse dieting, probably because I hopped on late. Yeah, check it out. I love that, again, Anytime that you're in a phase of your, um, you know, progress, I, I, you have to always remember how far you've come, okay? And I think some people get so wrapped up on where they want to go that they forget how far they've come. Like, for example, you want to lose 50 pounds and you've lost 25, but you've hit a, you know, a, a bump in the road. It's summertime, you know? Um, you know, you're burnt out. You need a break. But we're so focused on where we want to go, the fact that we haven't reached our goal, that we forget how far we've come. Never forget how far you've come. And maintenance should always be your number one goal, regardless of where you are. If you've lost five pounds and you want to lose five more, your first goal is to maintain. Your second goal is to lose more. And I think this kind of like red light, green light, you know, just kind of keeps you, again, focused on that maintenance point, that maintenance point. Thank you, Amanda, such great information. Should I wait until after surgery to start reverse dieting, just trying to maintain during healing? Um, actually, you know, healing is, I mean, when we are, uh, when, our, when we have wounds, when we have surgical wounds, when our body's under a lot of stress, we burn more calories, we need a lot more nutrition. So you know, um, bumping up your calories a little bit during that healing process is probably not a bad idea. Um, yeah, so definitely make sure you're getting adequate protein. That's really important for um, wound healing. So, you know, maybe just do like a little bump, you know, while you're, you're working on that recovery. Um, should the calories you add come from protein or any other macros? 
that's an amazing question. So we add 100 calories. I would say you keep your splits the same. If you work with me, then I am I know your protein goal is set correctly. All right. The again, the most important macronutrient for weight loss is adequate protein. And so I work really hard to make sure that all my clients' macros are set with the appropriate protein goal. So when you add 100 calories, it's going to add to your splits, whatever they may be, because they may vary from person to person. And so it will kind of equally add those to where it should be. Um, therefore, you'll actually get a little more protein. Okay, We would never want to reduce your protein intake when we reverse diet. Yes, ideal protein screwed me up massively. Uh, it, it does. I had a gastric sleeve. I'm really hungry and not losing. Do I still need to reverse diet? Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's the deal, guys. You know, a lot of people are like, I can't, I can't eat. I can't get up to 1,500 calories. I can't eat 100 calories. A fourth of an avocado is 100 calories. What, a half a tablespoon of butter is 100 calories. One ounce of nuts is 100 calories. Don't tell me you can't add an extra 100 calories, okay? It is easy to do. Now, if you're going to add 100 calories of broccoli, yes, you're going to have to eat, you know, five cups of broccoli. Um, but really healthy fats are some of the easiest ways to increase your caloric intake um, when you're not hungry. But yeah, absolutely. So I've done the eat like an asshole for a little too long and I've gained about six pounds, three over my green light. So do I go back um, to my calories that I was eating when I did lean? I mean, that's, you know, that's a um, loaded question. You know, we'd have to kind of look at all the metrics, but that's kind of where I would start. I mean, it sounds like you are off track. You are not eating your protein goal. You're not focused on macro management. You know, so I would say for the next four weeks, dial it in and see what your progress is. If you do not see weight loss over the next four weeks with dialing it in, you probably need to reverse diet. What's the absolute best protein and what do you think of plant protein? The absolute best protein is animal protein, period, okay? It's a superfood. It, it is a complete protein source. It has all the amino acids. It has massive amounts of vitamins and minerals that are important for thyroid health. You wanna know why we have an epidemic of thyroid issues, especially in young women? Because they think being a vegetarian is a good thing. It's not. And I don't think that you have to be a carnivore, but I think having at least small quality quantities of quality animal protein in your diet is important. I don't have anything against plant protein. Like I love plant protein. I, I mean, I eat it all. You know, I love edamame, I love hemp hearts, I love beans, I love legumes. Um, but I'm always going to incorporate animal protein because it is a complete protein source. Now, is it possible to be uber healthy eat, being a vegan? It is possible, but you have to eat a large variety of plant-based um, proteins. Okay, if you simply eat tofu, again, you're missing out. Every plant has a different amino acid profile. They're all incomplete. So you got to make sure you get a lot of variety to make sure you're getting that complete um, um, that complete protein source. Um, supplementing with branch chain amino acids is a really good thing if you're a vegan. So my personal belief, that's why I'm like, do not listen to Kim Kardashian. First, she told you to starve yourself for two weeks to get into Marilyn Monroe's dress. And now she's telling you to eat fake food. Um, and what do you think about BMI calculation? I think BMI is a really dated, poor, um, predictor of, you know, where your health is just because you're overweight does not mean you're unhealthy. Okay. Period. Obesity does not correlate 100% with health problems. Um, there are a lot of skinny fat people that have diabetes and hypertension that don't look like they do. And there are a lot of overweight people that are the picture of health. So BMI simply takes into account mass. And so again, like if you look at, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, I mean, he probably is considered morbidly obese, but when we look at his actual like body composition and maybe his waist circumference, he's probably pretty damn healthy. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I mean like Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was a bodybuilder and had 2% body fat, he was considered morbidly obese. So BMI is not a great calculator, waist circumference. That's what you want to look at. Percent body fat. That's what you want to look at, okay? So waist circumference, just Google what's a normal waist circumference. Um, the more weight you carry in your midsection, the worse it's for you. 
and then percent body fat. You can be skinny with a really high percent body fat and that's not good. Women need to be aiming for less than 30% body fat. What about PCOS? What about PCOS? Yes, nothing changes. Yes, um, again, you gotta focus on your foundation. Um, I'm not really clear on what I need to do if I had a plateau. You reverse diet. You are brilliant on, in your field. This is such an interesting concept. I can't wait to be a part of your program. Yay! Um, facing hip arthroplasty right now. Me too, girl. Um, speaking of lean, you know, I do want to give just a really quick plug. I do have a session of lean starting on Monday. Um, it is a foundational program. It is not a quick fix program. It is about teaching you the basics and it is about simplifying nutrition for weight loss. It's about showing you what matters most and teaching you how to implement it. It's about daily support and accountability. It's all run through my free private app. Absolutely no social media needed. Um, you have access to me 24 seven, you get daily support and accountability for myself and a, um, a coach on my team. Um, it's next level. So if you haven't tried lean and you're ready to give it a go, we've got a session starting on Monday fasting during workouts. I don't have any issue with it. I can't wait to start lean. Do you track your macros daily? I personally do not necessarily track my macros every single day. Um, I will go into periods of a deficit. I did a deficit like right before I went to Arizona. Um, where I tracked every day. I do track my protein every single day, okay? I am always aiming for 30 to 40 grams of protein two to three times a day. That's my goal. Um, so it, when I'm not tracking the nitty gritty, I'm at least tracking protein. Um, I miss lean, it's so good. Can I do it while pregnant? Planning to start again when the baby comes. You know, if you've done lean in the past and you're pregnant and you wanna jump in, we can do it with modifications. Um, I don't think doing lean pregnant the first time is beneficial. I just feel like you'll get so much more benefit doing it once the baby comes. Um, so yeah, we'll be here for you. Can intermittent fasting be a bad thing if you think you have a bad metabolism, meaning stress response, cortisol from chronic dieting? Um, not 14 to 16 hours or less. Yeah, 12 to 16 hours is very conservative fasting. You know, when people will send me articles and be like this, it says fasting wrecks women's hormones. Well, the study was based on, you know, women doing um, 36 hour fast every day. You know, they're doing three day fast. So it's really important to like quantify what they mean by fasting. There's so many different forms. So we use a gentle fast approach. It's 12 to 16 hours. Um, I don't recommend fasting beyond that because of protein optimization. This is my last week at Lean. I've absolutely loved it. Yay, welcome. Hello, North Carolina. Um, thanks for all the information. I'm in, in RD school and I've learned more from you so far. I can't wait. Girl, get ready. Yes, yeah, start your own education. Uh, when I did Lean last, I was put at 1,300 calories and thought that was really low. Well, hopefully you um, spoke up and you asked us why your calories were so low. Um, again, it just depends on what your height is, if you're super petite, um, but you know, definitely make sure that you um, reach out if you have any questions. Started lean in June and a calorie deficit. I'm just finishing up my first round of lean. This program is amazing. Nothing has worked for me in the past. Yay, I love that. Um, what if I'm comfortable at what I'm set at as a calorie caloric deficit? Can I leave it that way or should I reverse since I'm technically in a deficit and should I leave it alone? That's exactly what I said, okay? You leave it where it is, it will backfire come December, come that holiday, come that, that event that fall, you know um, kicks you off track. What's the harm of adding an extra 100 calories? What's the harm of adding an ounce of nuts, a fourth of an avocado? What's the harm? It's only gonna help you in the long run. Do not stay in a caloric deficit. At the bare minimum, add at least two to 300 calories. Started lean in January, love it. My calorie deficit is 1,800, but went back and averaged, and my average is 1,400. I've hit my goal. Should I change my macros and reverse diet at 1,400 calories? Yes. So I would start at 1,400 calories um, and start building up from that. The key is, is that in the lean program, we don't make you eat your calories, but we make you eat your protein. And the fact that she set up her mac, her calories at 1800, it ensured that she got enough protein. So she's been eating the protein allotment at 1800 calories, which is super important to stave off this kind of starvation mode with under eating, um, but has been full and satisfied at 1400 calories. But yes, I would start reverse dieting at 1500. Can't wait to start Monday. 
When I started lean, it was so full, and now I'm actually get hungry between meals. Not ravenous, I just know it's time to eat. That's a very good, again, that's another sign that you may need to reverse diet, okay? Because again, your fat cells have shrunk, <laughs> but your leptin receptors are, you know, less, and your, your leptin and your ghrelin is, is kind of all over the place. And so that's another good sign that, you know, it may be time to refeed. That's what we call it. Um, so sometimes, um, you know, hunger spikes, refeed a little bit, focus on maintenance, get your metabolism back, then you can go back in a deficit. Do you believe weight loss is based on calories in versus calories burned? Um, yes, weight loss is about adequate protein and a caloric deficit, okay? Now, calories in, calories burned, we don't really take into a, a large account in terms of calories burned because these things are not accurate. You know, we do do use an activity multiplier to account for activity, um, but it is all about a caloric deficit. Um, fellow Kentuckian here for more of your wisdom. What's up? Okay, awesome, guys. Great. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm going to save this, you know, live. If you have any questions about reverse dieting, let me know. Sign up for Lean. Let me help you, you know, through this whole process. Again, if you're in the monthly membership, be sure to download that reverse dieting guide. If you want to get your hands, your hands on a copy, um, grab it in my shop. Um, so yeah, love you guys. Happy Wednesday. Talk to you soon. Bye.